Hello and welcome to my latest video. This is a presentation about time switches, tele switches and telemeters, all soon to be obsolete in the UK. You may ask why I'm not putting a video on this. It's a rather niche subject to be honest. As an engineer this technology fascinates me. It's technology that predates the internet age and as things stand it will be withdrawn from service pretty soon as the smart meter rollout continues. I hope to do a decent job of trying to document it. This video is mainly going to take the shape of a glorified slideshow, so please feel free to use the timestamps in the video description to skip to whatever part you're interested in. Economy 7 is not the subject of this video, but I'll explain it briefly. It's an electricity tariff offered in the UK that grants the household a cheap electricity at night and more expensive electricity during the day. This video goes into detail about tele switches and time switches. They're used to control the economy seven times. These were quite popular for storage heaters and hot water heating during the day, but now it's more popular for car charging. I'll also add here, as far as I can find, Economy 7 is not the first multi-rate tariff in the UK, but it's probably the most popular. Just as an overview, here's a photograph of a typical Economy 7 meter setup. Most likely both meter and tele switch will be replaced with a single smart meter when the smart meter rollout is complete. So, on to time switches. A time switch is a very simple item. It switches a set of contacts dependent on time of day. Here is an image of a typical time switch installed in the meter cabinet. Dual rate meter top left. Time switch top right. Below the electricity meter is the DNO's cutout and cartridge fuse. From my research for six years between 1978 and 1984, time switches were the only way of controlling an Economy 7 electricity meter supply until the introduction of tele switching in 1984. Time switch has two main functions. It has low current contacts, typically 2 amps. These switch the meter from normal to low. You can see this controlling the meter in the photograph with the rate change wire running from the time switch to the meter. It also contains a set of heavy duty contacts, about 80 amps or so, that are used to bring high current economy 7 loads online, such as storage heaters and water heaters. A typical time switch may only be active for one or two periods during a day. When this was, was dependent on the tariff chosen by the customer and the electricity company that supplied the meter and time switch. It's worth noting that most time switches, as far as I could find, only had a single output so you couldn't control water and heating separately. This is the inside of a vernier time switch. Apologies for the brick dust. The largest part here is the synchro motor and the backup spring with a timing dial on top. Attached to the timing dial are these two little arms here and here marked out and in that hit these levers here. And these levers in turn action this contactor as I'm trying to show you. So that would be turning the system off and that would be turning the system on. Off, on. And this is normally done using those little levers there. Here is another example, same manufacturer but appears to be slightly older. This one does not have a backup spring, this just has a synchro motor. So this one, if there was a power cut, you would have to rewind by hand. I thought I would quickly show you how the time settings are changed on these. You rotate that slightly until it's loose, and then you can just move the arms around as you please to whichever hour, tighten it back up again. And then, then these are held in place. Here are some photographs of time switches in my collection. The technology of time switches was more or less good enough for the task in hand, but it did have a few drawbacks. Sometimes time switches would drift and you'd find you had off-peak electricity during the day. This was underreported for obvious reasons. Also, time switches being dumb did not care for the difference between BST and GMT. Due to their backup springs, power cuts may have been less of an issue, 
but not all time switches had backup springs. Both of these issues were sorted out by tele switches. There is an irony to be noted here. Tele switches were introduced to replace time switches, and by and large, they succeeded being more dynamic and more convenient to both customer and electricity company. With the BBC's threat that the 192 kilohertz signal that controls tele switching being shut down at some point in the near future, or more likely, tele switching services being shut down anyway, this would render time switches obsolete. As time switches are not dependent on radio switching, the humble time switch will probably outlive the tele switch that was developed to replace it. That is, if it's not ripped out by some smart meter fitter in the meantime. Now, on to tele switches. A tele switch, much like a time switch, has the same features. It's used to switch the meter to record low units, as well as a set of contacts to bring economy seven loads online. Looks look at a typical setup. Here is an image of a typical tele switch installed in the meter cabinet. It's much the same as the time switch installation, except there is no time switch and a tele switch is installed in its place. The real difference between tele switches and time switches is that tele switches can be dynamically controlled by the electricity company on demand. Now, what does dynamic control mean? Basically, it means more control to the network operator to everyone's benefit. This graphic is pulled from the Energy Network Association's website showing a world with and without teleswitching. Teleswitching allows them to flatten the curve of electrical demand on any given night should they want to. Some electricity boards went as far as using teleswitches and weather forecasts to attempt to maintain a consistent household temperature for customers that wanted the service. This was called budget warmth. One Scottish electricity company is actively using the system for network resiliency although whatever that means is up for debate, as well as what they'll do when the system is turned off. Tele switches were probably preferable over time switches when they were introduced in 1984 due to the dynamic features already mentioned. It's impossible to say quite when they fell out of favour, as they were probably superseded by digital thumb meters relying on an internal clock and tele meters when they were eventually introduced. So this is an example of a radio tele switch in my collection. Um, if we take off the front lid, we can see uh, manufactured by Sanger Mo Slumberger, 1992. Um, I've seen asked online, this is um, not a button actually, it's a little indicator, a little pip. That lets you know the location of the antenna, which orientation it's fitted. This is for the 80 amp contactor and this is for the 25 amp contactor and you can actually switch them on manually if you want. And um, here is the antenna. It's not an awful lot to see, it's a typ typical AM radio antenna. But um, yeah, and behind here is where the uh, main processor board is. And just in there are some dip switches which allow you to change the group code. So this is a much later tele switch manufactured by Horseman Controls. Um, much narrower and smaller than the previous one, but it serves exactly the same function. Um, we can take the lid off. It's just transparent plastic. And you can see the contactor again with a label telling you which way is which. A little pin out there for when the installer's getting going. Um, yeah, this is a was property of Yorkshire Electricity. Um, interestingly, the later tele switches don't have a way of programming the group code that's done using the infrared link in there. Uh, this example was made in 2002. John Ward has a video demonstrating both a teardown and the day-to-day -day operation of a tele switch. It's well worth watching. His video shows the use of a tele switch just like mine, with 25 and 80 amp independently switched outputs for water heating and for storage heaters. As I understand it, these dual use time switches may be slightly rare, as most had single outputs. At some point in the late 1990s, progress in electronics allowed the tele switch to be combined with an electricity meter and so the tele meter was developed. 
there's not a lot of them on the internet sadly compared to time switches or tele switches this seems to suggest they're installed in diminishing numbers any tele switching or telemetering equipment must have the date of manufacture printed on them this is in the standard this makes it quite easy to pinpoint their rollout by looking at vast images of telemeter photographs on the internet I've seen manufacture dates from 2000 to 2010, so this seems telemeters were installed during this period when required, and probably well into 2010s. As mentioned earlier, tele switches are controlled using the 192kHz carrier wave. Control and data signals are phase modulated onto the carrier wave used for broadcasting long wave radio 4. I have probably failed to eloquently describe the technique here, but if you have 220 quid, you can study it in detail in the British Standard. I did, and quite frankly, it's a great sleeping aid. This standard has now been withdrawn and replaced by BS7951, which is a standard regarding how telemeters should be designed and manufactured. It mostly contains references back to BS7647 anyway, so by not reading it, you're not really missing out on much. For some time now, the big electricity companies have been trying to signpost the end of the teleswitching system. 2017? 2019, 2021, 2022, and now 2023. There are, however, a few things that are not in their favour. Smart meter manufacturers focus their primary efforts on single rate meters, understandably. They have now seemingly started looking at economy 7 smart meters now, or at least smart meters that can carry the economy 7 tariff. The Energy Network Alliance document goes into some significant detail about how these problems came about and possible solutions. It's, it's worth a read if you're interested. Amusingly, from a spectator point of view, there is still a vast number of these things out there working in the background. It's kind of curious to see if they'll actually replace them all before they turn off the system. 1.6 million in 2016, 1.4 million in February 2020, and in 2021, there's still a million out there. The white line is just a line of best fit, which suggests they'll be done in 2031. The red line is a slightly more generous line that uses the only the last two data points, suggesting they'll be done in 2024. Wonder how much progress they'll make? It's anyone's guess, really. Place your bets. There are reports that some of the electricity companies are pushing customers to get smart meters installed as tele switching meters are being withdrawn as early as 2020 apparently. If this is SSE trying to get ahead of the game or coerce customers into getting a smart meter, we may never know. I think the future is pretty clear. Smart meters are coming for your old tele switches, time switches, and tele meters, and they will probably replace them. As reluctant as I am to embrace smart meters, I think personally they'll be used to hike prices during peak times. They will inevitably replace them at some point, especially when the tele switching back end is turned off. And to this end, electricity companies will be prioritizing replacing tele switches and not time switches, which means that your time switch may escape the smart meter rollout if you're lucky. I found putting together a timeline helped when putting this video together, and it seemed a waste not to share it here. It seems all in all, teleswitching became their preferred method of controlling rate changing tariffs and with the dynamic nature of it, why not? It seemed to work quite well. Towards the end of the timeline you can see the smart meter rollout and the failed attempts at radio teleswitching service being ended. If only they could just choose a date and commit to it. Other things of interest perhaps are also here. Alan Cordwell did some research on teleswitches, a general overview, message structure and decoding these messages. It's a very good write-up. The BBC did some initial research work on the technique in December 1984, seemingly laying out the groundwork. Uh, their research paper makes for a good read. And um, group codes, the easiest way of categorising teleswitches into groups uh, using your group codes. There are some 127 out there. A breakdown of these codes is listed in an Energy Network Association document. All these links are in the description if you're interested. So um, thank you for sitting through and watching this video presentation. Hope you've enjoyed it and it's provided you with at least some interesting information. And uh, subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. Thanks for watching.